Why is the Tesla Model 3 the most sold EV worldwide? We're going to find out and will it stay that way? Well, first time here on our channel, the Standard Range Plus model, SR Plus, in the facelifted version, rear-wheel drive only, the version that most people will buy. Why? Let's find out. And let's start with the things I love and the things I hate. Things I love, the range, even here with the 55 kilowatt hour net battery in the Standard Range Plus model, 400 kilometers or 250 miles, really efficient. Then of course the supercharging network. In general the very clean interior design. Oh yes, and that you can also get a wide interior as an option. With the facelift, the new microfiber inductive charging pads and the sporty driving performance already with the SR Plus model. What I don't like, the decor element here at the dashboard is too bright when you pick the wide seat version. The speed is just displayed here in the upper left corner. No instruments. You could solve it with head-up display. But there is none. What I don't like either are the panel gaps, for example, here at the interior and the rear. They still need to fix these things. Yeah, I know. Maybe that's a very German thing to criticize. Busted. Oh, yes. And they still have some sharp edges where they are supposed to be none. To open or close the vehicle here, you need the key card. Hold it at the B pillar or use your smartphone here as the mobile key. But uh, I don't know. I'm just the type of guy. I need the classic key fobs. I don't trust the other things. Do you? However, gladly you can also order a classic key fob here for the Tesla Model 3 just by the accessory shop. Sleek design in front, there are the turning indicators and the daytime running lights. And you can see here these are the standard 18 inch wheels. And I would recommend to stick with these because they are smaller, have more dampening comfort, and they also have the aerodynamic style. Yes, the bigger ones look cooler, but these here do a better comfort job. And they're also cheaper. And you know we are a channel of details. So here the VIN, F for Fremont. So this car comes from the US. C it would be when it came from China. So when they will have vehicles from Berlin plant or Brandenburg, that's where it actually is, from the German plant that is supposed to be built, will they have a B then in there? Or a G for Germany? Hmm. And since the facelift here, the frame here is in black, also so-called chrome delete because there was chrome before. And once again, 18 inch wheels here and they correspond now a little bit better because when they are dark and also the frame is dark right here and also the door handles here stay in black, this works very well than with the black wheels. So what do you think? In 5.6 seconds to one kilometers or 5.3 seconds to 60 miles an hour, it's the acceleration figure here with the rear wheel drive model, the SR Plus Standard Range Plus model. We go for the long range model with the all wheel drive, one and a half seconds faster, or even faster with the upgrade, or then with the true performance model. Some people say it's not a premium interior. Well, it's clean, and some parts are premium. For example, also the seats, this very soft leatherette surface, animal free, and also the steering wheel is animal free. So, Tesla shows everyone how to do that in a more sustainable way. Getting inside is really easy because you have this easy entry function. So I have this position here set to an easy entry mode. And then when I start driving, I have my personal seating position. Seat comes forward and the steering wheel comes towards me. That's good. I have a comfortable seating position here and I also have enough headroom here with one with A6 or 6 with one. However, we talked about in the Polestar 2 comparison episode, the seats are not that much optimized for tall people, so they can still fix some things there for the future, maybe different, more ergonomic seat form or something. The panoramic roof, of course, is super fancy, but we have the feedback from customers in really hot states that they say the AC cannot really cope with that when the sun is really shining in there. And I have actually also interesting experience because the ladies always tell me, what kind of climate is in this vehicle? Everything here in the top is so hot and in the lower area with the feet then when the AC is on is so cold, I'm not feeling comfortable here. Yeah, so that's maybe a thing they need to fix. But at least, of course, it's always good when everything up here is really hot, right? <laughs> and then here in the infotainment system, usually you have everything in the controls right here. You do your setup once, like display and what driving modes you want to be in. Acceleration, I usually leave with chill. This is also the Thomas setup, so we can 
put your own user account. Here's the energy consumption, really efficient, talking more about that later also in during the driving part. So everything is rather straightforward if you want set it. Just setting the AC, I like to have separate controls for that. However, you can also use the voice input. Set temperature to 22 degrees. Yay! Oh, and by the way, here, when you click on it and then you also have this slider, so this is another possibility to control a little bit fast and this rear view camera here is also a great resolution and then in the rear it does work for tall adults it's not the most comfortable seating position here in the rear also headroom wise there's no problem but yeah again not the most ideal seating position but also not bad and the trunk area is really cool here easily fit the cabin trolley and this huge box underneath for example, also for storing charging cables if you need them. So you can put even the suitcase here just in this lower case and then still have a decent length. And that is more than a meter or more than 40 inches. And of course you have the frunk in the Model 3 and actually already quite spacious. If you wonder, by the way, the difference to see the V3 supercharger, that's how they look like. And from the outside like this, so this is the V3 supercharger with one cable and this is also a little bit thinner. However, in front still looks like this. And this is the V2 supercharger here, there the cables are split. And the top one also looks like this, again for the Model 3. And the lower one looks like this, then for S and X. And you can see also that these cables are also thicker. And here we can see the battery is about 20% and we can reach about 150 kilowatts approximately at this stage. The SR Plus, Standard Range Plus model, is maximum charging 170 kilowatt, but only when the battery is like almost empty. And here you can see that the charging curve is already begin to flatten a little bit, but that's still already quite good. And the long range model, by the way, that one is 250 kilowatt maximum charging peak. At 40%, it already falls down to 80 kilowatt for a longer period of time it was 50 kilowatt and now towards 40 kilowatt when we are approaching our 80 percent goal and now we are at 80 percent and it took around 30 minutes to get from 20 to 80 percent it's of course not too spectacular but interesting always that now from 80 to 100 it would take the very same amount of time once more and then there's of course the price 41,000 pounds, 40,000 euros or 38,000 dollars and that makes the Tesla Model 3 a good price performance ratio. One of the crucial reasons why the Tesla Model 3 is the most sold EV. But soon there are the Kia EV6 and the Ionic 5 to come, another competitor next to the Polestar 2. Welcome to Thomas's electrified driving lounge and Look at that, 13 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers as average energy consumption. So around 20 kilowatt hours per 100 miles, most of the time even lower. That's ridiculously efficient. That's awesome and bringing a range of higher than 400 kilometers and more than 250 miles. Awesome here, 55 kilowatt hour battery in the SR Plus model. However, setting driving mode to standard and this is the rear wheel drive only model. It's not as fast as the all wheel drive model. But here, you can still let it hang out from 30 kilometers an hour to, let's go. Woo. That's 180 kilometers an hour. Wow, awesome acceleration, although we don't have the strongest model right here. That's really super cool, so you won't miss the sportiness. Of course, the long range model with the overdrive drive or then the performance model is even more extreme, but already with this here, with the SR Plus model here, racing facelift, you can still impress some people who have not driven EVs yet. It's like, whoa, that's an instant acceleration. Torque is already there, really great. They've also worked a little bit on the noise insulation. Now, at the moment, it's picking up the rain a little bit. Yes, the Tesla Model 3 is not the most silent vehicle at higher speeds. Definitely there. It lags a little bit behind, you know, if you consider like the typical German competition with the mid-size vehicles. 
but at you know normal speeds like 100 kilometers, 60 miles an hour, 75 miles an hour, 120 kilometers an hour, it's still reasonable and you can also travel on the motorway. By the way, I did a test 120 kilometers an hour or 75 miles an hour on the motorway constantaneously. And of course, the energy consumption is a little bit higher. I have about like 17 kilowatt hours on one kilometers or like 25, 27 kilowatt hours on 100 miles. That then would mean, in this case, a range of around 300 kilometers or 190 miles for constant motorway speed in a higher stage. But still, that's really decent, and especially considering the price you pay for this vehicle once again. And really nice from the lane change. The steering is very precise and direct. It feels somewhat a little bit artificial, but you can also set different levels, like soft, a little bit more feedback, or even harder in the infotainment system. It's actually quite easy to do here in, um, you know, when driving, steering mode. I leave it in standard. That's, to me, the most, you know, suitable. Comfort is a little bit too loose, I think, and sport is maybe a little bit too stiff, but so the standard steering mode is, to me, actually fine. And then it's really fun to drive, also so the lane changes and so on. So can't complain about that. And once again, throttle input is really spontaneous. And I usually set the acceleration here to chill because in standard mode, it's something even too fast, even here in the SR Plus model. So you're just a little bit more efficient and also just calmer while driving this vehicle. When you leave the acceleration in the chill mode, would be lässig in German in the translation here in the screen. Yeah, why not? German lesson for the day. So, once again, very good presentation here in the driving mode, and yeah. You feel you can put this car in the slalom. It sometimes feels go kart alike, low center of gravity because the batteries are, of course, EV platform alike. Here in the lower end of the vehicle, really good with low center of gravity. Gives you a very sporty feeling. And now, talked about it earlier, so important, stick with the 18-inch wheels. They bring you so much more comfort comparing to the 19-inch wheels. And it's just a better ride. Yes, they don't look that great from the outside. But once again, this car does not offer an adaptive suspension. The base suspension is not the best one we know. It's somewhat okay. Yes, it gives you a sporty driving feeling. But when there are some fierce bumps in the road, it sometimes gets a little bit uncomfortable. But here, with the standard 18-inch wheels, it's definitely better, more tire left for you know dampening out these bumps. So definitely stick with these. And the good thing is you also just save some money. And also lower speeds here, good with lane change and so on. The one thing I'm not satisfied with is definitely the so-called autopilot. You have a normal cruise control and then you have the autopilot which can take over the steering in a way, but you have to keep your hands on the steering wheel. And I've been testing so many different systems over the years and this one here has too many false positives and false negatives. So sometimes when there's nothing, you have sudden braking. You know, they give software other than reason, you know, regularly that helps definitely, but sometimes it did happen. And also these situations, you know, uh, on, on the other hand, where you think like, you know, oh, now the car should react, but it doesn't keep it properly in the lane. So to me, I'm not a fan of the autopilot, totally not. I'm usually, indeed, not using it. Still having the hopes, however, up that they will update it more and more and more. They also constantaneously gather cloud data to keep it updated and maybe at some point then they are able to overtake the classic manufacturers in this respect. So I don't miss the power of the all-wheel drive model. Really cool also to have rear-wheel drive. Then, yeah. <laughs> it's always fun just to have the rear-wheel drive. It just boosts you out of the corner a little bit better, so I'm really totally satisfied with leaving a little bit of power. All-wheel drive model, if you want more range, of course, and if you need that all-wheel drive, depending on where you live, most people will be just just be fine with this um, with this model here. Here, by the way, in the bright interior, you see it does reflect a little bit of sunlight, especially when the sun is coming out a little bit more. So I wish they would also offer for the white model something that's a little bit darker. Rather. It looks fancy, but to me a little bit too distracting, although I still like the white seats. Hmm, yeah, what about that? And by the way, it's also a little bit weird to put the camera on at higher speeds and have the camera image. Then, yeah, 
but why not? Gives you an interesting perspective as well. Now, when we're already at speed, one more acceleration. I put it once again in the standard driving mode. Let's see, one kilometer, 60 miles, let's go. Still something coming, that's good. So even when you overtake someone on the motorway, high speeds, no problem. And now once again at higher speeds, the car still remains stable and calm on the road. Very well done. And there's also a Model 3 performance episode on the racetrack. You can tune into that one. Or very interesting, you should check out Model 3 long range against the Polestar 2. This is a very interesting video. Be sure to check out this comparison. So see it definitely there.